2013, so five years before my arrival, that uh, Gambia won their last competitive match against Tanzania. Um, when I came, I really said my target is to qualify Gambia for AFCON and people didn't believe me, but I had screened the possible uh, players, uh, young talents, players playing everywhere in the world and we start building together. I was supported by the Federation, had good coaching staff. Uh, step by step we improved uh, the technical team and the medical team. Uh, we had immediately good results because our first match was a 1-1 draw against Algeria, followed by 1-1 to Togo, uh, two games later a win against Benin. So we moved very fast forward. Um, but the belief also grew step by step. Um, it was only said that before this AFCON we had to play still pre-qualification against Djibouti. That was not easy. Uh, we, had, uh, we needed penalties uh, to qualify. Um, but then we came in a group with Angola, Gabon and uh, DRC. Um, three uh, very difficult opponents who played also in the 2019 AFCON. Uh, but we managed to win that group and, and that gave a lot of confidence. Well, we, in the last three and a half years, about 34 players made their debut in the national team. We, I travelled a lot around. First, I stayed most of the time in, in Gambia to see all the local based players, to see all the leagues. Uh, when I start travelling around in Europe, I did some screening and selection of players who no one knew. Uh, visit them, watch them, see the quality of these players. And uh, step by step, uh, we managed to assemble a team uh, not always the best players, but the best team. Players who understood the tactics, who were willing to fight for their country, because for me, playing for your national team is the biggest honor a player can achieve. Hearing that anthem, we know all. Uh, in Gambia, there are 2.2 million people, uh, Gambians all over the world, but only 11 people can wear that shirt and hear that anthem on, in, in the pitch. That must be an honor. And we also selected based on that. We wanted the players to die for their country, to be disciplined for their country. And uh, yeah, our achievements, our results were coming, but we never thought that we could reach now uh, the quarter-final of AFCON in our maiden AFCON. That was naturally never planned before. Coach, you mentioned the players and the role that they play in this particular team, but it's also important to note that over seven of your players, they play in the lower division clubs in Europe. I'm sure that you face some sort of criticism in calling up um, the squad. Yeah, and uh, the last we have about Kami has a, at this moment of time about 130 players abroad. Uh, some of them play in top leagues. Uh, we know the players in Bologna, Sampdoria, uh, Spezia, Roma, Zurich and all. But we have a lot of players in lower leagues. We have players also playing in Estonia, in the fourth division in Finland or in Sweden, in the United States, so in different leagues. And for me it was very important not only to focus to the big name players, the players who play in the big leagues, uh, because then you have many times the same type of players. And the risk is if you have too many big names that you don't have uh, work workers in the team, people who will execute what is needed uh, to win the plan. Uh, it's in the past also proven in AFCON that sometimes the big nations with the big names didn't win and when the big names were dropped uh, that the uh, teams were successful. So we looked more at what could the player bring to the team, how much is his desire to, to fight for his country and to follow the tactical strategy, then where is he playing? Um, and sometimes there were critics, uh, and many times there were critics from journalists who didn't understand why a player who played in, in a European League, Premier League, uh, was not selected and a lower league player uh, was. Uh, but it was all based on the tactical demands and actually also on the balance between the group. Uh, you work, uh, and for sure, in a tournament, you work weeks together in preparation and then the tournament. And you need to assemble a group who is ready to, to live together, to, to eat together, to play together, to have fun together and sometimes also to cry together. And, and that's very important in assembling this team. And that's the reason we have that ideal mix of players who play 4th division in Sweden, 5th division in Switzerland, 4th division in Denmark, combined with players who play in Serie A or in Belgian Premier League or in Swiss Top League. During the Africa Cup of Nations draw in July, you stated that you were not worried about the, um, your group opponents. Did this mindset ever change? No, uh, I think since we took over or since I took over, um, uh, we were very confident. We had two draws with Algeria. We won a friendly in Morocco. We beat countries as Togo, Benin, uh, Angola, uh, Gabon, uh, Congo. Um, so we played against respected football nations in Africa, teams who were always at AFCON. So we knew that we were competitive. 
uh, to the best countries in African football. And um, my team uh, know what to do, how to play football in ball possession, but also what they have to do when we don't have the ball. And then it doesn't matter which opponent we face. We can lose games, that's normal and inherent on football, but we don't have to be afraid of any opponent. We, we can face any opponent and we can get good results against them. And playing Mauritania, Mali and Tunisia looked for me a very decent draw. Tunisia was at that moment of time or at this moment 120 positions better on the world ranking than us. Mali about 98 positions better and even Mauritania 47 positions better than us. All three teams played on the last AFCON had much more experience than us. But um, I like these tasks and my players are also ready for it. We don't want it too easy. We like to compete with the best because then we can show our ability. But how are you able to maintain the, this team talking about their mentality? Naturally, in every team you have sometimes uh, uh, players who are not happy because they don't play and that's also normal. Uh, it would be strange if a player is uh, happy not to play. Uh, but we try to manage that, we try to talk a lot with them and what we also did in the first round, we, uh, we used a lot of players. And now after four games I can say that 26 of our 27 available players played. It's only our third goalkeeper who didn't get minutes but all the other 26 players played and it was really a target not to let them play only to play but tactically we had sometimes choices to choose according to the opponent a certain type of player or a certain type of formation. Secondly we wanted to save also some players for other matches. Some players had in the first round already a yellow card and we didn't want to get them a second yellow card to be missed in the eighth final. And, and last but not least also as a motivational factor we really wanted that everyone who's part of this team it's the maiden afcon the first afcon for all gambians we know how eager players are to to experience afcon to be there to to play on this tournament to go home and be able to say hey i was on that pitch to have that picture that footage on tv on the pitch so that's also the mental part you're also a little bit a people manager and if the possibility is there i don't say i'm going to put someone on the pitch if there's uh, no need for it, but if the possibility was there to choose a certain player, we did it and, and that brings also uh, a better atmosphere in the group. Now the majority of our team played at AFCON and everyone is ready for the next, next task, task uh, on Saturday against Cameroon. But most importantly, what, what works for this particular team? Is it a success for Hunger? Yeah, we are eager to prove the world that Gambia is a football nation to be respected um, and most of all the honor to play for your country. Um, I worked with 10 national teams and one of my main reasons to uh, select players is I want players who feel honored to be there. I'm as national team coach always honored to represent the country, to hear that anthem, to be the chosen one uh, for the joy and pride of all the people who watch TV at home, uh, who never will have the opportunity to kick a ball on this level. So I want players who are really motivated to do that. And naturally there is an, uh, an, an internal motivation within the group. We have some goal settings, we want to achieve something, we have high aims, we want to show everyone how good we are. And in real goal setting, players who want to move up from, from lower leagues or from without being contract, because even in this group players have no contract for already half a year or longer. Uh, so there's a lot of motivation inside the group as a team, not as an individual, to achieve something on this tournament. And we keep that hunger, we keep that fire and that passion because that's very important in life. You need the motivation to achieve more. We are satisfied with what we get, but we want more. But as a coach, what, what has been your biggest highlight with um, this team at the Africa Cup of Nations? Um, naturally, I will always remember the first match. Uh, no one had any idea what Gambia could do and uh, the celebrations after the 1-0 the victory against Mauritania in the dressing room but also at the homeland Gambia were impressive. It was uh, a surprise for a lot of people. It brought uh, a history to the country, winning your first match at AFCON. Um, many people said after the game, if we lose now everything, we are still satisfied. But naturally, we wanted more and I think personally, uh, my, our best match was probably against Mali. For me, Mali is a very good nation. It's a little bit surprising that they got kicked out by Equatorial Guinea, but a very good nation. And tactically, my team played so disciplined. We had only a draw, but the tactical discipline the boys did was, was amazing. And in theory, we enjoy every moment, uh, even the, the qualification actually for the quarter final against Guinea, where we had a lot of setbacks, where we even had to change players, uh, two players less than an hour before the match. And other players were standing up. So for me, this 
this whole AFCON is, is a highlight. I'm very proud of my team. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud to be part of this team and, and my boys make me very, very, very uh, yeah, hungry for more. The big one is coming. You come up against um, Cameroon as a host nation in the quarterfinals. How difficult of a game are you anticipating? I think it could be the most difficult game of the tournament for sure for us. Uh, for two reasons. First of all, Cameroon is a fantastic football nation, uh, so much quality. They have a great uh, history of football, always playing on the highest level in Africa. One of the first uh, nations also at, at, at World Cup level. Um, and, and even in 2017, African champion. So a lot of players have that experience playing big tournaments, uh, playing also in Europe on high level. Secondly, naturally, um, they play at home. At home it's always an advantage. If you see the stadiums, uh, even for normal games, there's a lot of crowd, more than in normal Afghans. Sometimes in the past, if you play in Egypt, some games were played for 2,000 people. Now there's eight to 10,000 people for teams who have even no base here. Um, and, and Cameroon play now at home in the Wawa, a big stadium. The crowd will be fully behind them and uh, I think that will strengthen them. Cameroon is one of the favourites for sure after um, the, the loss of, of, of teams like Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Nigeria, Algeria and Ghana that are four teams who normally battle for, for victory in the tournament. Cameroon knows now that the chance is there that they can become champion of Africa again and uh, these factors will make it very difficult for us. On the other side, if we have everyone available, and we have no reason to doubt about that, because uh, the second two last matches against uh, Tunisia and Guinea Conakry, we had no COVID cases, not in the staff and not in the player group. So we are almost quite sure that every player will be available. Uh, there are some slight injuries, but hopefully everyone recover well. I think we can be very competitive, uh, but for sure uh, Cameroon is the favorite and that's also normal. Yeah, we had some struggles in the earlier weeks, but uh, now we are in, in Douala. We are settling in a very good hotel. Um, we are home here and uh, the atmosphere is very good. Uh, a few players are recovered from, from uh, be, being sickness and some injuries. Um, like I said, we had no COVID cases, so that makes us also stronger. And uh, we have some days still before that match, so I'm sure we will be ready for that game. Psychologically, it will be very important to uh, relax the players. Uh, we never played these games as national team on this level and if you think about players who play lower leagues in Europe and now playing for a fantastic stadium, full crowded fantastic stadium, um, that will be maybe different but I will tell my players very clear, go out and enjoy it, play in the tactical discipline but enjoy it because this could be once in a lifetime for some of the boys uh, and we have nothing to lose but the atmosphere is good, we are looking ahead of it, we are again not afraid of them uh, and we will see after 90 minutes maybe 120 minutes or penalties if we can compete with them and you never know maybe we can surprise once more. Coach I know this is going to be a bit um, ambitious and maybe far-fetched but you come into the tournament clearly um, you have that ambition so I'll ask you um, what would it take for you to maybe win the Africa Cup of Nations can you go all the way can you win the Africa Cup of Nations or is it a bit too much? Um, I hope it's not uh, in the morning when we wake up from a dream because uh, it would be a dream. So at this moment, I think it only happens at night for us uh, that we win the AFCON or maybe at PlayStation. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we, you never know. We are uh, now in the quarterfinal. No one ever thought about this uh, before the tournament. But I think we are still miles away from uh, becoming African champion. Everything could change. Imagine we could win from Cameroon, but that chance is limited. Uh, naturally, the, the situation changes and the chances become bigger. Uh, but I had more a bigger ambition that we want to put uh, Gambia on the, on, on the map, on the football map, on the world football map. And not only once in a tournament. Uh, in the past, sometimes countries made their debut but didn't qualify in the future anymore. And I think it's very important for Gambian football that we become a regular in African football on Africa Cup and maybe in 2026 when uh, it's an expanded World Cup, uh, we could compete to go there. And naturally, we, we have dreams and we think sometimes about things, but we have to be also res respectful for our opponents and realistic. Um, and we take match by match. Uh, next game is against Cameroon. And um, then we will see if you are still in the running. Uh, but I think this moment, being African champion, happens only on PlayStation or in our dreams. There's also been um, speculation about your future. Are you staying on or maybe looking 
um, elsewhere after the Nations Cup. At this moment, I'm fully focused on, on Gambia. I'm a Gambian coach at this AFCON and uh, I want to get the best for Gambian football. Uh, let's uh, focus on, on achieving here something, writing more history. Uh, and, and that's all what counts right now. Uh, that's my future, uh, the game of Saturday. That's uh, the most important future for Gambian football and for myself. And, and we will see what the, to, uh, what, the, what the real future after that will bring. Coach, thank you very much for your time. We wish you all.